This is a video um, tutorial explaining how to use the basic features of Diagramly, the drawing diagramming plugin for Confluence, and Dryo, the equivalent plugin for Jira. Uh, in terms of the editor itself, um, they both appear pretty much identical for the same release number for Confluence and Jira. Uh, the only real difference is uh, how you insert the diagrams. So in a conference page, if you click on edit the page, uh, there's two ways you can get a diagram in. You can either start typing the diagramly macro and the suggestion will come up, um, or you could go to the insert menu and say insert diagramly diagram. That gives you some more options in terms of um, the dimensions of the read-only um, insert in the page, border, grid, etc. If you then save the page as we wait for our ultra-fast Confluence install um, you will then see on the save page um, this start editing the diagram, your diagram and you click on the link and you're into the editor. So again on Jira, um, it's not quite the same in Jira, there are actually attachments to the page rather um, than inserts in the page. So to, to add uh, a Dryo diagram as it's called, you click on draw, add Dryo diagram <coughs> and you then have, uh, you're, you're then in the editor and when you save, uh, as we'll see later, actually no, no let's do that now, save it, give it a name, then exit and you'll see the the viewer on the right hand side where the attachments live and if you click on the the edit pen you go back and edit. So we've got we've got a diagram in Confluence and Jira so from now on um, um, how you use the editor for the same version number in, in both releases is, is basically the same so we'll we'll sit in Jira and go through the basic functionality there so in the user interface you, you have the main drawing canvas you have the libraries and the stencils they can contain on the left you have the menu the toolbar um, you have a footer at the bottom which you can remove with that cross and you have an overview panel sometimes known as bird's eye view um, it is interactive, you can move it around, you can also um, resize it which invokes a zoom on the main canvas. Um, one basic tip here is to move around the canvas, uh, just right click. If you right click and drag uh, you'll move the canvas area. So in terms of getting shapes onto the canvas area there's two ways to do it. You can either click and release and that will drop a shape in the top left or if you click hold, drag and release you can actually position where you drop the shape. On touch devices and both the plugins have full touch device support this equates to touching once, holding, dragging and releasing. You, you can assume throughout this video that click equates to tap on, on touch devices. So there, there are more shapes um, available than you can you see when you start up the editor. If you, if you uh, compact the, the general shapes you have these shapes available and also if you click on more shapes um, there's about twice as many more more shapes available that you can select and you can also deselect shapes to just have the ones you want in the editor um, so here we have um, the fairly well-known Cisco set of networking icons in, in terms of interacting shapes on the main canvas you can click and then drag shapes you can resize them by using these handles uh, and you can rotate them using the uh, blue circle that appears above shapes when you select them. To create a um, connector between two shapes, there's two places you can start and end connectors. You have, um, if you select a shape, you have this arrow um, that creates what's known as a floating point, floating port, um, in which the the connector appears to float around the perimeter of a shape depending on uh, where it's instant on that perimeter. Um, also if you're not selected you have these very small crosses 
that you might not be able to make out on the YouTube video, um, but they're highlighted when you hover over them. And if you click, drag, and release, you can either release on the floating perimeter, which is the whole central area of another shape, or one of the fixed ports there. And again, for connecting from the central port to central port there. Now, they look the same when they're parallel or the horizontal with each other, but when you rotate them around each other, you'll see that this one, which is the um, floating um, edge, um, that always attaches to the perimeter at where it's instant upon the other vertex, whereas this one, the fixed one, uh, that always connects to um, the same point, i.e. fixed. Um, now, obviously when you move these two around, um, this one, the fixed one, is overlapping the vertex. Um, uh, and a basic hint there is if you select this uh, item on the toolbar, which is edge routing, and go down to orthogonal, for example, um, it will then route that edge around um, the, the vertices to which it's connected and avoid overlap. Um, to edit text, double click on a, on a cell uh, or an edge. Um, uh, pressing enter does not finish editing, it actually creates a new line. Um, the way to finish editing is to click outside of the cell um, and also if you're um, editing and you don't want to complete a change, if you press escape that exits and cancels the changes you made since you started editing. Um, in terms of text formatting, um, one of the most popular options is uh, is under the format menu, uh, the text menu, and it's formatted text. And when you select that for a cell, um, and then go to edit it, you'll see that the the toolbar changes, and this changes to the um, HTML label uh, toolbar um, because these are actually labels written in in HTML, um, and that gives you options, more advanced options like superscript, subscript, uh, tables, and so on. Um, there is actually an option on the right to edit the raw HTML, so if you're happy coding HTML you can write <coughs> really quite complex labels directly in HTML. Um, this shape here called formatted text in the general section that is a cell that has formatted text switched on by default. Uh, most don't but that's just a placeholder um, so that you can create one without having to go, go to the menu. Um, the view menu anyone who's worked with apps before should be familiar with. Um, it's it's the usual zooming and fitting to page. Um, the format menu relates to the operations and it's contextual menu, the operations that are available for the current element. So if you select um, a cell or you select a connector, the operations available are different. For example, line end, line start. Uh, you know, if you want to put arrows at the beginning of end of a of an edge, uh, and obviously that's not available for for shapes, for uh, normal cells, vertices. Um, one other worth thing worth pointing out is um, the Z order. Um, there is a Z order to two cells. So if we get rid of that, um, we can see that um, uh, this test new line vertex is above the other vertex, which has the label label in Z order so if you right click and say to front on that one that one will then appear above it. Um, the other feature worth playing with is um, automatic layouting. If for example you create a, a small directed graph and go to arrange layout horizontal flow um, it will lay out with a direction from from the um, cells you selected. There's also an organic a tree, for example, for all charts and so on. Um, in terms of other features, uh, under File, um, Export, um, they, uh, there are the various raster and um, vector export formats available, PNG, GIF, JPEG, um, PDF, SVG, other vector formats. XML is the um, raw format, the, the diagram data, um, should you ever want to extract that. Um, if you go to File Edit, you can actually see the, the raw XML visible. 
um, if you have a previously saved XML file, you can drop it into um, drop it into that dialog, and then select replace existing diagram, and that will that will override it if for some reason you want a, a local physical copy. Um, another feature that might be useful is um, if we go back to this one and say that we've created our fixed point to fixed point edge and we wanted to say it's orthogonal and say that we put a line end of an arrow on and say that you want all your, your connectors from now on to have that behavior you can either right click and set as default edge and that's also available um, on the edit menu if you're on an iPad uh, a touch device if you touch and hold that's the equivalent of right click if you want to bring up the context menu on an iPad for example um, uh, the world symbol which is actually slightly darkened in this format if, if you want a particular language installed um, all, of the, all of the menus are to a greater extent translated in all the, the languages available um, if I were to select Thai, for example, it would say refresh the page, and the next time you come on to the editor, it's not an immediate change of uh, languages. Um, they would be pretty much mostly in Thai. Um, in terms of support, um, there is a link to this video tutorial um, because it's currently in progress. That link won't actually come to it because I haven't finished it yet. Um, there is a link to the Google Plus support page. You don't need a Google login to look at it. Um, and what that tells you is the process to go through to um, get support for the various issues you might have. And of course, it doesn't want to load now. Uh, we'll come back to that. Um, in terms of cost and the, the product itself, you know how long it's going to uh, be around for. Um, uh, the the Confluence and Jira plugins are both free, and we we made a promise that if you are already using uh, one of those products, or you already have it installed, you will be at no point charged for all of the features you currently have. So um, you know there'll be no retro retrospective charge applied for functionality that you already use for free. Um, we may technically. Um, uh, charge for additional features but currently there is nothing in our business plans uh, to do so yeah okay so the the Google Plus page is loaded um, it talks about general questions the best place for general questions is on Atlassian answers um, if you have loss of data or functionality um, file a support ticket um, Confluence and Jira are our by far our best platforms. Uh, we've never had an instance of loss of data I can think of. Um, we have occasional bugs, but um, generally they're fixed very quickly. Uh, and there's also a link to feature requests. But uh, but for general sort of questions that you don't, you're not quite sure where they go, um, post them to Atlassian Answers. That's the most contextual place to post them. Um, I think that's pretty much everything. Um, if we save that diagram and we save this one. Uh, what we should see is when we exit, and this is on a server sitting one meter away from me. Okay, so <laughs> in, in Jira um, you'll see the diagram <coughs> As an attachment, um, you can do various things. It, it, it is a vector attachment. You can. Um, my computer is running very slowly because of the presentation software. Uh, zoom in and out. You can. Uh, you can drag it around. Uh, you can fit to screen, delete it, edit again, and so on. Uh, again on Confluence. Um, it's it's this diagram effect. Very very helpful. Um, you can do the same things in and out, uh, fit to screen, delete, edit and so on. Um, the YouTube comments for this video will be disabled. Um, if there is any feedback, um, the best place to submit it is probably the Google Plus community. Uh, 
you could post it to allow it allows in answers it's probably a bit off topic so probably the, the Google Plus community and we'll add anything that uh, people find useful.